So now on to the dinosaur of the day, Hypsilophodon, which again is a request from our listener Zach, so thanks Zach. Hypsilophodon is an ornithopod, and its name means Hypsilophus tooth. It lived in the early Cretaceous in what's now England, and the type species is Hypsilophodon foxy, named between 1869 to 70, depending on who you ask. It was found in the Wessex Formation in the Isle of Wight, and there have been a lot of fossils found on the Isle of Wight. Almost 100 specimens of Hypsilophodon have been found there, and over 20 dinosaur species have been found there. 20 Hypsilophodon specimens were found in one place where they died together, and scientists think may have been from quicksand. The type species name comes from Reverend William Fox, who discovered the 1868 specimen with a skull. For that, Hypsilophodon bones have been found, but no skull. Hypsilophodon was small bipedal, about 5.9 feet or 1.8 meters long, and weighed about 45 pounds or 20 kilograms. It was an agile runner and had a sharp beak that it used to bite off vegetation. It was an herbivore, but also possibly an omnivore. What's interesting about Hypsilophodon is how many misconceptions there have been of the dinosaur. So, for example, scientists used to think that Hypsilophodon climbed trees and was armored. It was first found in 1849, again, without the skull. Two pieces were sold, one to the naturalist James Scott Bowerbank, and at the time they thought that the Hypsilophodon bones were actually the bones of a young iguanodon. One man named Mentel described it as an iguanodon in 1849, and Richard Owen also described it as an iguanodon in 1855. But then in 1870, the paleontologist Thomas Henry Huxley wrote a more comprehensive description after he was able to study the skull that the Reverend William Fox had found. Huxley was the first to note that ornithischians had pubic bones that pointed backwards like birds. And he chose the name Hypsilophodon because he wanted it to be similar to the Iguanodon's name, which means iguana tooth. So he chose to name the dinosaur after an extant herbivorous lizard. Richard Owen, however, still thought that Hypsilophodon was not a different genus, and he renamed it in 1874 Iguanodon foxy. But scientists rejected that. And another person, John Whitaker Hulk, was able to study more specimens from fox and further rejected Richard Owen's renaming to Iguanodon Foxy. So it's going to be a little jumping back and forth between years here because a lot of different things happened, but in 1874, Hulk described Hypsilophodon as armored. In 2008, paleontologist Galton wrote that the armor was actually from the torso and, quote, an example of internal intercostal plates associated with the rib cage. It consists of thin mineralized circular plates growing from the back end of the middle rib shaft and overlapping the front edge of the subsequent rib, end quote. So that's the story of how scientists no longer think that Hypsilophodon was armored. But in 1882, Hulk also said that Hypsilophodon was probably quadrupedal and he climbed rocks and trees because it had a grasping hand. In 1912, the paleontologist Athenio Abel said that it was an arboreal animal, and in 1916, Gerard Heilman said that it lived like a modern tree kangaroo. But in 1926, Heilman changed his mind and said the first toe was not opposable because it was, quote, firmly connected to the second, so it couldn't have climbed in trees easily. But in 1927, Athenio Abel denied this description, and in 1936, a paleontologist named Swinton said that even though the first metatarsal was forward-pointing, it might have had a movable toe. It wasn't until 1969 when Peter M. Galton analyzed the skeleton, and again, Galton is the one who determined that Hypsilophodon did not have armor. He described Hypsilophodon as not being able to climb, but instead being a bipedal runner. So to sum up, originally Hypsilophodon went through many stages of description, but at one time it was considered quadrupedal on four legs, living in trees like a modern kangaroo and having armor. But now we think that it did not have armor, it was bipedal, and that it was a very agile runner. Most of the Hypsilophodon specimens that have been studied were found between 1849 and 1922, and they're now housed in the Natural History Museum in London, at least about 20 of them. If you want to see a Hypsilophodon, there's some on display in the Natural History Museum in London. So again, Peter Malcolm Galton, he published his thesis on Hypsilophodon in the 1960s, which started modern research on this dinosaur. 
For a brief period in 1978 to 1979, Galton and James Jensen, who you may remember from our episode on Ultrasaurus, named another Hypsilophidan species called Hypsilophidan wylandii after George Reber Wyland found a thigh bone in South Dakota. They thought that this species was proof of a land bridge between North America and Europe, but now the specimen is considered an indeterminate basal ornithopod. Interestingly, even though Hypsilophidon lived in the Cretaceous, it had primitive features such as five digits on each hand and four digits on each foot, and its fifth finger was opposable and could grab food. It had a beak like other ornithischians, but it also had five teeth in its premaxilla, which is the front of the upper jaw, and most herbivores in this time no longer had these front teeth. They were more specialized. Hypsilophidon had a large eye socket, thin pointy bones over the top half of its eyes to give it shade and also make it look fierce. It had a short, large skull with a triangular snout and a beak, and this beak-like mouth means that it may have been choosy about what it ate. It had 28 to 30 teeth that were fan-shaped, and it continually replaced its teeth. It may have had cheeks to help chew its food, and because it was so small, it ate low-growing plants, probably like shoots and roots. They also probably moved in large groups, and because of these things, Hypsilophidon has been dubbed the deer of the Mesozoic. They may have been semi-quadrupedal when eating low-growing plants, and they may have eaten seeds, like cichads and cone-like seed plants, but not much is known about its habitat. Possible predators include Eotyrannus, Neovenator, and Baryonyx, and no Hypsilophidon nests have been found, but related species have been found with neatly arranged nests, so Hypsilophidon may have cared for their eggs before hatching. Hypsilophidon was one of the fastest types of dinosaur, probably. It had a body built for running, it was lightweight, had long legs, a stiff tail for balance, and it may have been the best ornithischian adapted to running. When running, it kept its spine horizontally level to the ground, so its long tail would have helped it counterbalance. In addition to the Natural History Museum in London, you can also see a mounted skeleton of Hypsilophidon at Dinosaur Isle, which is Britain's first purpose-built dinosaur museum and visitor attraction based on the Isle of Wight, according to their website. Hypsilophidon is part of the family Hypsilophodonts, and they were small, long bipedal herbivores. Some made burrows for their young, like Erectodromius, and we talk about Erectodromius actually in episode 2 when we interviewed Dr. Anthony J. Martin, who discovered the burrow. Hypsilophodonts lived in the Middle Jurassic to Late Cretaceous, and fossils have been found in Asia, Australia, Europe, New Zealand, North America, and South America. 